all right so uh, let's um, talk about the blood supply of the heart as well as the the nerve supply or the conducting system that has been present inside the the myocardium uh, inside the the heart cavities which is uh, making the heart uh, contract and relax so first i'll start with the coronary circulation or the blood supply to the heart all right so i just have mentioned in my previous session that uh, why the vessels which are irrigating the heart musculature and the heart uh, the structures within the heart uh, are known as the coronary vessels because you know that uh, here uh, is our heart and uh, there is a coronary sulcus which is present between the atria and the ventricles and it why it is known as coronary sulcus because it is encircling the heart in the middle like a crown okay corona crown so the coronary vessels are the vessels which are running within this groove or sulcus all right um, as we know that the aorta is emerging from the left ventricle and aorta is the largest uh, artery of the body it's it's um, carrying fresh oxygenated blood towards the body okay so the first right over that freshly oxygenated blood is of the heart itself okay we have to understand that the heart is pumping the left heart is pumping fresh blood out towards the body but the first right on that blood is of heart itself okay so as, as you can see over here, uh, yeah, so I have a sketched. I hope that you're able to see these sketches. They are not very big, they're not magnified, but I'm hoping that you are capable of observing the details. So here you can see the aorta, which I, I, I did mention that it is lying on the, on the right of the pulmonary trunk, okay? The, from the base of the aorta, from the point where it is commencing, just above the semilunar aortic valve, there are aortic cusp, oh, sorry, aortic uh, sinuses, expansion within the wall of the aorta. So there is a, a right sinus and a left sinus. From these sinuses are emerging the two arteries which are going to irrigate the, the heart musculature and internal structure itself, right? So you can see that this is the right atrium. So this is supposed to be the right side of the heart. Like if you place it like this, the right heart, okay? So this is supposed to be the right sinus, right aortic sinus. From the right aortic sinus is the is the right coronary artery originating okay so this purplish pink colored vessel is representing the right coronary artery from the left aortic sinus is emerging this green colored vessel which in actual life is not green obviously it is carrying fresh blood so but just for our uh, differentiation I have given the color codes to these vessels okay so the left coronary artery is emerging from the left aortic sinus. So the aortic sinuses are located at the commencement of the ascending aorta, which is going to ascend and will go behind the sternum and form an arch. Okay, we are not concerned with the arch, we are with the branches which are emerging from the arch. I am just focusing on that small segment of the aorta which is giving. Uh, origin to these coronary arteries that is the ascending part of aorta okay so let's come back to our topic the right coronary artery as you can see uh, the right side is anteriorly facing okay so the these arteries will come out from the left ventricle between the uh, uh, within and they will run within the grooves present 
on either side of the infundibulum. Okay, if you remember the infundibulum was the expanded funnel shaped smooth part of the left ventricle uh, of the right ventricle that was leading to this pulmonary trunk. So the, the, the left coronary artery, this is the left ventricle and this is the red, left atrium as I hope that you're able to see the left ventricle, the left atrium. Okay, so the left coronary artery will run on the left side of the infundibulum or the pulmonary trunk. The right, the right coronary artery is going to go behind. It is running bit, uh, within the groove between the uh, infundibulum and the right auricle. So it is not visible to you on this model because uh, the auricle is you know, literally covering that groove up. But if I flip the heart, you will be able to see the right coronary artery is going back like it's wrapping the uh, the AV groove or the coronary sulcus from behind while the uh, the left coronary artery is you know wrapping around the groove from from the front so I want you to have this concept completely clear in your head that the left coronary artery is very bold. It is not scared of facing the world. So it is anti, most of its parts are lying anteriorly. Most, most of its branches are anteriorly located. They, they are visible uh, over the, uh, the sternocostal surface of the heart, which is the anterior surface. While the right coronary artery is a, is a shy one. It doesn't want to show itself up. So most of the right coronary artery and its branches, they are placed, they are located be at the back part of the heart, not at the back, but the inferior surface of the heart. So the right coronary artery is dominating the inferior surface while the left coronary artery is dominating the anterior surface. I hope that this is clear. This is the basic point. Now let's go back to our drawing. So you can see these dotted lines are indicating the posterior part of the vessels, okay, which are not visible. So you're looking at the sternocostal or the anterior surface where I'm holding this model where both the ventricles are visible and the right atrium is visible, but the no left atrium is showing off because left atrium is equally shy, okay. So here you can see the within this anterior interventricular groove, the groove which is lying between the right ventricle and the left ventricle is running the first branch that, have, that has been given off by the left coronary artery, this green vessel, which is taking origin from the left aortic sinus. So the first branch that has been given off, it, it, it is going to slip down. It is going to descend down. It will run down into this groove. That's why this branch is also known as, because of its positioning, it is known as the anterior interventricular artery. Or in clinical terms, it has been known as the left anterior descending or LAD, left anterior descending artery, okay? So the anterior interventricular artery is the first branch of the left coronary artery. Okay? And it is visible from the anterior surface, over the anterior surface. Okay? Then what happens? The left coronary artery is going to wrap around this sulcus. So it is known as the circumflex branch. So here you can see this is the circumflex branch, which is running within the AV groove or the coronary sulcus. It is sitting on top of the left ventricle. It is also going to give multiple branches. I'm in this lecture, I'm just going to give you an overview, just the basic overview of the coronary vasculature and coronary circulation, because this lecture is not supposed to be dealing with the details. I am just going to give you the names of the basic branches, which are very prominent. I'm not going into the details of the, the, the smaller branches, which are going to supply each and every part a segment of the heart okay so there are mainly two branches 
emerging from the left coronary artery, the one which is descending down into the anterior ventricular groove, interventricular groove, it is known as the anterior interventricular artery or left anterior descending because it is emerging from the left coronary artery. The second branch is visible to you. It is wrapping around the left auricle, just below the left auricle and above the left ventricle and it's known as the circumflex artery because of its position. Circumflex, it's circumventing, okay? Circumflex artery sometimes gives off a marginal branch which runs just above the diaphragmatic or inferior surface of the left ventricle. So this, is, this can also be known as the left marginal artery. Okay, I haven't mentioned the name of the left marginal artery, but it is one of the branches of the left coronary artery. So you just have to focus on the two main branches, the anterior interventricular artery or LAT and the circumflex artery. They are emerging from the left coronary artery. Now let's talk about the right coronary artery, which is not very showing. It's not almost like it's not visible from the anterior surface. It just, the moment it emerges out, it is running between the, the, the within the groove between the pulmonary trunk and the left or, uh, and the right auricle, it just wraps, it just moves backward, okay? So when I flip the heart, this, just try to recall the borders, the surfaces, the, the very first lecture I gave to you. Anterior surface, and then there was an inferior surface. And if you remember, the posterior surface was also known as the base of the heart, and it has been formed by the left, vent uh, left atrium, okay? So we are talking about this surface, which is the inferior surface, not the posterior surface, okay? So the right coronary artery, as it just emerges, like it is, it is coming backward, and then will give off a branch, oh, before moving, uh, before moving towards the inferior surface, which is completely invisible to our naked eyes, uh, it gives off a branch that is running at the margin of, or the, uh, just above the, the inferior surface, uh, inferior border of the left, uh, of the right ventricle, okay? The inferior border of the right ventricle, this is above the diaphragmatic surface. It gives off a branch, the right coronary artery, and that branch is known as the marginal artery. Okay, here you can see before moving backward towards the posterior surface or sorry, inferior surface of the heart, it gives off a branch that is that is going to supply the, the inferior margin of the heart. So there is supposed to be a left marginal branch and a right marginal branch. Both are emerging from the respective arteries. Okay, then in uh, uh, at the inferior surface, you can see the right coronary artery is giving off a very large branch. This very large branch is running within the inferior interventricular groove at the diaphragmatic surface or the inferior surface. This branch is known as inferior interventricular artery. And there is a, it's a misnomer when it has been labeled as an posterior interventricular artery. There is no posterior interventricular groove. Okay, you just have to remember there is inferior interventricular groove. Within that inferior groove, the inferior interventricular artery is running above anterior interventricular artery is running. Now, if I place my two fingers, my index fingers are representing the two interventricular arteries. And you can see the anterior artery is ending up here just above the apex and the posterior or, or the inferior artery is ending up again, just a little bit away from the apex. And then there is an anastomosis between the branches of the left and the right coronary arteries, okay? There is always an extensive anastomosis between the two right and left coronary vessels. You just have to remember that, okay? Then, so in nutshell, we can say that the, uh, the two branches from the left coronary artery are the circumflex and the anterior interventricular artery. The two branches from the right coronary artery are the marginal and the inferior interventricular arteries. With the help of these major branches, the coronary arteries are going to supply all the parts of the heart. Now here, 
I have mentioned, like, uh, there is a drawing showing you the, uh, the areas of distribution. So if you, if you just have to remember that the ventricles, the, the distribution pattern of the coronary vessels over the ventricular musculature is pretty much constant. But when it comes to the atria, the distribution within the atria is a little bit, you know, uh, uh, showing a like a, a fluctuation, showing a uh, uh, like a um, a different pattern. Okay, it, depending upon uh, people, like there is a variation in the 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 distribution pattern within the atria, but the ventricular distribution is pretty much constant. So first, we have to look at the, these two ventricles. You can see this is the interventricular septum. Uh, or the uh, yeah so if you open up the, the the ventricular cavity you'll be able to see the septum line between the two ventricles so here this is the anterior vent uh, anterior surface of the two ventricles okay so the right ventricle is showing two-third of the right ventricle or two-third of the anterior surface has been dominated by the right ventricle so you can see the right ventricular ventricle has been supplied by the right coronary artery Okay, and just a small part of the right ventricle at the junction where the, the, inf uh, the uh, pulmonary trunk is emerging and the left auricle. So this chunk has been supplied by branches of, by a branch of left coronary artery. So you can say that 90% of the right ventricle has been supplied by the right coronary artery and just 10% just at the top on the anterior surface is supplied by a branch of left coronary artery. Then when you flip the, the surface, so now here you can see the posterior, or oh, sorry, the inferior surface of the uh, two ventricles. So here is the inferior interventricular groove and the septum, the part of the septum, which is at the back. You can see that the, the uh, I, I did mention that the inferior surface is dominated by the left ventricle. So the two third of the inferior surface has been formed by the left ventricle and one third by the right ventricle because the right ventricle is dominating the anterior surface. So here you can see the left ventricle has been supplied by here also you, you've seen that the green, color, uh, the green color is representing the left coronary artery. Okay, so the left ventricle is being supplied by the uh, left coronary artery, except for its inferior surface, a, a strip on the inferior surface, which is closer to the interventricular groove, or uh, inferior interventricular groove. This part, this strip, is being supplied by branch of right coronary artery, okay? So it makes a lot of sense, like a little bit of left ventricle, has been supplied by a branch of uh, right coronary artery and a bit of uh, right ventricle has been supplied by a branch of left coronary artery. That makes a lot of sense. And the, both coronary arteries are anastomosing with each other at the apex. They are, the anastomotic vessels are going to supply the apex of the uh, heart, okay? Then what about the interventricular septum? As you can see, there is purple and green both. So the interventricular septum is being irrigated by the branches of both arteries. So right uh, coronary as well as left coronary artery are, are participating in the uh, um, irrigation of the interventricular septum. Okay, now let's come to the atria. So the atria, most of the times the anterior wall of the right atrium has been supplied by the right coronary artery the posterior wall has been supplied by the left coronary artery and the same thing happens with the the left atrium the anterior wall has been supplied by the right and the posterior wall is supplied by the left and it can vary okay but our main concern are the conducting system elements because they are the ones which are driving the heart they literally are the motors of the heart fine with blood supply, but the heart will never be able to pump, it will never be able to act as a motor um, without its conducting system. So the, main, the key players are these nodes. So here you can see there is an SA, SA node that is the sinoatrial node, and then 
AV node that is atrioventricular node and the bundle of his. I'm going to talk about these structures in detail when I'm going to talk about the uh, conducting system. You just have to remember like the conducting system just like the septum, the interventricular septum is getting its blood supply from both branches, from both arteries. But predominantly the right coronary artery is playing the major role when it comes to the blood supply towards the conducting system. Here you can see the formula. In 60% of the population, the right coronary artery is supplying the SA node. While in 40% of the population, it's the left coronary arteries branch that is going to supply the SA node. So it, dip, it varies. So in 60%, in majority of the people, the right coronary artery gives off a branch to the SA node or the nodal branch. In 40% of people, the uh, uh, left coronary artery is going to give a nodal branch to SA node, okay? Then the AV node and the bundle, 90% of the population, in 90% of the population, it's the right coronary artery that gives off branches to the AV node as well as the bundle of his, okay? While in 10%, just 10% of population, left coronary artery is going to supply these structures of the conducting system. So by just looking at this map of the arterial supply, the nutshell distribution pattern or the, like the map, you can figure out that both the arteries are playing very important role. But most of the times, if there is a main blockage or huge obstruction within the right coronary artery, that is going to create a chaos, a havoc within the body. Because it's the right coronary artery in 90% of people that is going to supply the AV and AV, AV node and the AV bundle. And in 60% of people it is supplying the uh, SA node. But mostly, uh, luckily, it's not the right coronary artery that gets affected by clogging or obstruction. It's mainly one of the branches of the left, cor uh, left coronary artery and the branches, the most common branch is the anterior descending or left anterior descending or LAD that gets the uh, obstruction, okay? And you know that the left ventricle, it, majority, like 90% of the left ventricular musculature is supplied by the branches of left coronary artery. So if something goes wrong with the left coronary artery or any of its main branches, it is going to affect the left ventricular musculature. And you know that left ventricle is playing a key role in the distribution of blood, fresh oxygenated blood. So there will be a crisis for sure. All right. So the conducting system, before moving on to the venous drainage, I want you to understand the conducting system of the heart gets its majority of blood supply through right coronary artery in 90% of people. Okay. Now come back, come to the venous drainage. If you remember, I, I did mention uh, that there are three veins opening into the right atrial cavity, the superior inferior vena cavae and the coronary sinus. So the coronary sinus is the, it's the major vein which is draining, which is getting the deoxygenated blood from the smaller veins which are draining the cardiac musculature. So let's talk about it. So here is the coronary sinus and it is not, again, just like the right coronary artery, you will not be able to see the coronary sinus when you open up the chest cavity and you're looking at the anterior surface. It is present when you flip the heart, you will be able to see the coronary sinus running within the coronary sulcus, okay? So in the dotted line, you can see that the coronary sinus is located in, on the inferior surface. It is not visible to us. Here, uh, there are, we did talk about the three major arteries, the anterior interventricular artery, branch of left coronary, the inferior interventricular artery, branch of right coronary, and the marginal artery, again, a branch of right coronary, okay? So keeping these three main arteries, we can figure out the three main veins which are accompanying these arteries. They are following the pathway of the arteries, okay? So they are running together. 
Here, the great cardiac vein is accompanying the lat. Within the anterior interventricular groove, an artery and a vein are running together. Which artery? The anterior interventricular or anterior descending artery and the great cardiac vein. Okay, so the great cardiac vein is going to drain the blood from the same area of the ventricles that have been supplied by the, the anterior interventricular artery. Okay, artery is pushing oxygenated blood to, towards those areas and vein is draining of that, those areas, uh, draining off the deoxygenated blood from those areas. Okay, so great cardiac vein is accompanying the anterior interventricular artery. Here it is being mentioned. Okay, then the posterior, oh sorry, inferior interventricular artery and groove. So the, post, the, the middle cardiac vein here, you can see it is again dotted because you're looking at the anterior surface. So from anterior, if you are, if, if, imagine the heart is transparent and you are able to see its inferior surface or the surface which is not uh, visible, right? You are able to see. So here is the posterior, uh, inferior interventricular sulcus or groove. And within that groove are running again an artery and a vein, a pair. So the artery is the inferior interventricular artery which is the main branch of the right coronary artery. It is irrigating the, uh, the uh, uh, right ventricle and a part of left ventricle closer to the uh, groove. And the, the same areas have been drained off by the middle cardiac vein. So great cardiac vein accompanying the anterior interventricular artery. Middle cardiac vein is accompanying the uh, inferior interventricular artery. Okay, then we are left with a, with a branch which is known as the marginal artery. It's going to supply the, the, the diaphragmatic border or the inferior border of the two ventricles. So that has been followed by the small cardiac vein. Okay, so small cardiac vein is accompanying the marginal artery which is a branch of right coronary artery. I'm not talking about the left marginal Okay, I'm talking, so the left marginal branch is running on this oblique left border of the uh, uh, heart. But the, the true marginal branch is running over the inferior border of the heart. That marginal artery has been accompanied by the small cardiac vein. Now what is happening? These three major, there are other veins as well, but I'm not going to go into that detail. Okay, so these three major veins are ultimately going to dump their blood, the deoxygenated blood, into the coronary sinus. You can see the great cardiac vein is opening up at the beginning of the coronary sinus. The middle cardiac vein is opening up into the coronary sinus and the small cardiac vein is ultimately draining into the coronary sinus. Finally, the coronary sinus is going to open into the right atrial cavity just beside the right or tricuspid valve, okay? So this, I want you to remember this pattern, which is pretty much fixed. It doesn't show any variation. There are variations in the coronary vasculature when it comes to the smaller branches. As I did mention that in 60% of people, the uh, in 40% of people, the SNO has been supplied by a branch from the cor uh, left coronary artery. While in 10% of people, the AV node and the, uh, the bundle of his are supplied by uh, the branch from the left coronary artery. But it is like, in, an, like minute detail, right? Uh, as far as the anastomosis is concerned, I know that it can make a lot of sense when once you have the idea of this mapping pattern that the, the there are two superficial anastomoses which are close to the surface. Anastomosis between the right, by anastomosis I mean like a communication between the right and the left coronary arteries, okay? So at the apex, there is an anastomosis between the anterior interventricular and inferior interventricular. These are the two branches of left and right coronary arteries respectively, 
okay through this anastomosis the apex is being uh, supplied okay and then there is another anastomosis within the coronary sulcus the, the this, this anastomosis again you can see the green color is the branch from the left uh, coronary artery and the purple pink is the branch from the right coronary artery so here you can see within the coronary sulcus this anastomosis is being taking place between the left and right coronary arteries so they, that makes two superficial or surface anastomosis then there is a, like a huge deep anastomosis that is present within the interventricular septum so you can see the branches of uh, the uh, right and left coronary arteries are anastomosing extensively within the interventricular septum okay these anastomoses are playing an important role when there is some kind of blockade that develops at a slow level if there is a blockade that has been developing over the period of years within any of these coronary arteries there will be an alternate path the, those anastomotic channels or anastomotic arterioles will open up just to bypass that obstruction so that is going to save the life of that person but unfortunately it doesn't happen very often in people the, the blockage is sudden uh, abrupt and that leads to the death of that part of the uh, myocardium which has been supplied or irrigated by that branch okay so at this level this is all that is important for you guys right now let's talk about the conducting system of the heart first before moving on to this drawing i want you to to remember that uh, the autonomic nervous system which is autonomous it is not 100% dependent upon the central nervous system so even some if sometimes when a person is dead the heart keeps on beating for some time and that's so strange and that happens because of that autonomy okay so the autonomic nervous system in our body is having two wings a sympathetic and 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 a parasympathetic okay this in heart in the heart when we talk about the 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 cardiovascular system the sympathetic innervation the sympathetic fibers are going to increase the uh, the contractility they are going to increase the action potential generation the sympathetic stimulation while the parasympathetic stimulation parasympathetic fibers are going to slow down the contraction so they are going to slow down the heart rate they are going to slow down the contraction of blood vessels you just have to remember the contractility it gets increased with sympathetic over stimulation and it gets decreased with parasympathetic overstimulation okay and the main parasympathetic nerve which is going to come towards the heart and going to supply it is going to innervate the heart is known as the vagus nerve or uh, the 10th cranial nerve i am going to talk about the nervous system in my next session the basics or the overview to the uh, the human nervous system and that i'm going to elaborate upon the cranial nerves and i'm going to talk about a little bit about the autonomic nervous system but at this point you just have to remember that it's the autonomic nervous system which is controlling the movement or the act, the the action potential of the heart musculature and it's the musculature which is responsible for the pumping or it is ruling the heart okay so then we have to think about certain structures physical structures which are present within the cavity of the right atrium you just have to remember that right atrium is very important although in this model you won't be able to see any of these uh, conducting system structures because it's like just a superficial model but you have to remember at the posterior sorry at the posterior wall of the left of the right atrium just below the opening of the supia vena cava there is a like a specialized myocardial tissue always remember that the conducting system elements are not the true nerve structures 
they are the specialized or modified cells of the myocardium okay so they belong to the myocardium they belong to the muscular network okay you just have to remember so just be beside the opening of the supia vena cava there is a small uh, pinhead size structure which is present that is known as a sinoatrial node sa node and that is also at times being mentioned as the pacemaker of the heart okay it sets the rhythm okay then we have another node which is present just beside the opening of the inferior vena cava at the floor of the right atrium here just between the um, uh, coronary sinus and the interatrial septum there is another button shaped structure that is known as the AV node or atrioventricular node because it is present at the junction of the atria and ventricle, uh, ventricle yeah so AV node then from the AV node a, an elongated bundle is descending through the septum through the interventricular septum now this story of the atria atrium is finished we are now have entered the interventricular septum so that elongated structure is known as the atrioventricular bundle av bundle or bundle of his okay you just have to remember in clinical books it has been mentioned as bundle of his which is the av bundle it's the same thing so we have three main structures two nodes and a bundle okay a, the sa node is considered to be the pacemaker that is the physiological pacemaker of the heart okay which is located just beside the opening of the supia vena cava in the right atrium then the av node which is the second pacemaker in case of the failure of sa node it takes over so the av node is present just uh, close to the the lower part of the interatrial septum beside the opening of the coronary sinus okay then we have a, a connected elongated bundle running within the uh, the top part of the interventricular septum that is known as the av bundle or bundle of his then the bundle gives off two branches the two branches are running they are descending through the interventricular septum and then once they reach this apex they move upward they as ascend back right so here in the drawing it's pretty much clearly observable that the right and right and left av branches or bundle branches right and left bundle branches are going to go like they they'll move back up towards the atria and in doing so they are giving off extensive fibers small like tentacle like fibers which are known as and they are those fibers have been you know invading through the myocardium and they are known as the purkinje fibers purkinje fibers okay these pink colored thread like uh, like like they, they look like the brand the the roots of any tree okay so uh they are known as purkinje fibers so this whole setup is the it's is 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 the the key player okay so the sympathetic stimulation reaches or it it the sympathetic fibers are going to fire and are going to hit the sa node and then the sa node will the action potential within the sa node is going to spread across the ventricles uh, across the atria you can see the sa node as a nodal fibers are extending not just uh, onto the walls of the right atrium but also across the walls of the left atrium right then one branch of the as a nodal fiber is going to send that stimulus towards the av node that is being stimulated now so as a node is the first structure in the conducting system to get stimulated by the sympathetic stimulation that is going to send signals to the AV node. The AV node is going to send signal to the AV bundle of his and then the bundle branches get activated and then the Purkinje system or Purkinje fibers. Through the Purkinje fibers the electrical potential or action potential is spreading 
across the ventricular musculature. Okay, and that, that's why it is really very important if there is a blockage at the level of either bundle or AV node. The atria will be getting depolarization waves. They will be getting the action potential. The atria will be constantly contracting, relaxing, contracting, relaxing. But the action potential is not reaching the ventricles. It's not reaching the ventricular musculature. So the ventricles stay silent because the blockade is present at the level of AV bundle or AV node. So there will be no downward transmission of the stimulus. And that is really a critical condition, okay? The ventricular failure. All right, so here you can see that I have a table for you, just like we have a table for the coronary distribution or the arterial distribution. I have a table for the SA, AV, and bundle. So SA node, uh, I want you to imagine that uh, there is a, a, a train with three engines, okay? The front engine is the SA node. It's the speed is 70 to 80 beats per minute, okay? That is the pace of SA node, the, the front engine. The middle engine is the AV node. Its speed limit is 40 to 60 per minute. So 40 to 60 beats per minute. The last engine or the third engine is the AV bundle, this bundle. Its speed is the slowest of all, 20 to 40 beats per minute. Now, if you have this picture in your mind that we have a long train, the, 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 the uh, uh, what you call the um, bogies uh, of the train, they are completely dependent upon the engine, right? So the, the, the cardiac musculature is like a train with three engines. The musculature, the contraction and relaxation of the musculature is completely dependent upon these three engines, the SA node, the AV node, and the bundle of his. Okay, they, the, the muscles themselves cannot move, not even a single bit, without the stimulation, without the engine. Okay, so what happens? If the front engine is working efficiently, like any, like in any normal person, there is 70 to 80 beats per minute pace that has been maintained and the train is running. Somehow or the other, the SA node, say for example, one of the branches of the right coronary artery, the nodal branch, which is supplying the SA node in 60% of population, it just stops uh, irrigating the node. So the node will be uh, like, uh, suffering from lack of blood supply, will suffer from ischemia, it will stop functioning, SNO, like SA nodal failure. So the front engine is gone now. So the second engine, which was in the middle, the AV node, will take over after some time. After appreciating and realizing that, oh, the front engine has stopped working, so I have to keep up with the pace. But its speed is... 40 to 60 per minute. So the heart rate will slow down. 40 to 60 beats per minute, which is not normal. So there will be some deprivation, deprivation of blood supply towards the peripheral tissues. So the person will be in a compromised state. Okay, then what will happen? The second engine, in, say for example, in somebody, the first engine, second engine, both are failing. SA node and then AV node. Then what will happen? The ventricular musculature is going to work according to the pace of the AV bundle, the third engine. That is, this, the pace is 20 to 40 beats per minute, which is pretty much compromised, okay? It's a very, very critical condition. When the two nodes are failing, they are failed, they, they are not generating any action potential, it's just the AV bundle, which is taking care of everything. So the beat rate will be 20 to 40 beats per minute. Okay. 
So I want you to understand that the pacemaker, the physiological pacemaker is playing the pivotal role. And it is really very important for it to be functioning properly so that the heart musculature, the rhythm of the heart has been maintained. Okay? Uh, yeah. So as far as the, the overview of the cardiovascular system is concerned, I'm almost done with it. And I hope that uh, these small uh, tutorials, uh, sessions, they are going to help you understand the concept of the vessels, the, the pumping organ that is heart, its surfaces, its borders, its uh, chambers, what role has been played by which chamber, then the blood supply towards to the, to the heart itself, uh, the coronary circulation or the coronary blood supply. Then the conducting system, how the heart is capable of pumping at a regular rhythm. That's very important. Okay, I haven't gone into the details of uh, the pathological conditions because it's just a preliminary or the introductory session. Uh, for, the, for the different pathological conditions uh, related to the cardiovascular system, I'm going to uh, uh, give lectures on the detailed anatomy and the detailed physiology of the cardiovascular system, uh, which is not a part of this session. All right. Thank you very much. My next lecture will be on the, the overview of the, the central nervous system.